Okay, so this is one of many other methods to do the bottom deal. Actually, this uh, grip, I think, is one of the most comfortable for me, uh, which um, this is uh, the grip, and uh, mechanics grip. So you see how the index finger is relaxing underneath the deco playing cards. Second and third finger in the side, and the fourth finger, this is the, the key for a bottom deal at least for the one I was doing. Notice that uh, the forefinger is actually uh, relaxed right uh, behind, pushing this bottom half against the index finger, okay? And the reason is because I need to hold the cards in position. So when I throw this top card, now, well, before I proceed, let me tell you that uh, these, these are the B. Uh, these cards are actually uh, really nice for second and bottom deals because it doesn't have the white frame, you know, on the edges. So I'm gonna use instead of these deco playing cards, I'm gonna use this other one. Uh, of course, this one doesn't uh, deceive as much as the B ones uh, because of the white frame, you know, white edges. And as you can see, the forefinger is pushing the bottom half against the index finger. Uh, because when I take the top card, I'm reaching sooner or later to the card um, underneath the deck. And if you don't have the forefinger, obviously, you're gonna do a whole mess, you know. So to keep everything in position, you need to stick the forefinger all the way outside, okay? Just the very tip underneath this bottom half. And you don't even need to do a lot of pressure just by relaxing the hand itself. The forefinger is gonna push automatically against the index finger, which is a, a great thing. So you don't have to be concerned about the, the pressure. Anyway, the deco playing cards is not really in awful condition. It's not really brand new neither, but at least it's not a really bad. Uh, sticky cards, you know, and I take the card at the bottom just like so. Uh, there are many other grips in which you can, you need to have the two fingers in front and then buckle so you can reach the card at the bottom so it's not really hard, you know, to get it out. In this grip, it's actually uh, quite easy because and actually it doesn't require a lot of um, practice probably in about a week or one month of practice, you'll have a really nice speed, you know. And uh, just reach underneath, get the card at the bottom. I don't like to have the pinky roll all the way outside because the top card is, doesn't have a lot of freedom. So instead I have the pinky finger right underneath and you have a, lot, um, you have a little bit more freedom but uh, I just push to the side anyway. I don't push uh, like that. I push it straight to the side, okay? So I can reach with the index. I always use the index. You can use the middle finger. The problem 
uh, if you use the middle finger, you won't be able to throw the card like that. I mean, well, at least uh, you practice um, how to throw the cards. Because to throw the cards, you pinch with the index and thumb, and then the middle finger is right here, pushing, you see, the card. You use the, the middle finger to reach, then you have to use the middle finger as well to reach the top and the bottom. Okay, and over here, instead you have to use the third finger, which is, uh, well, I'm not used to throw the cards with a third finger, you know. So, uh, in the performance, for uh, the, the throwing cards, I was using the index finger and the thumb, and the middle finger right behind, to throw the card, you know and then I reach the card underneath. Now, this uh, bottom deal is much easier actually, more invisible if you use at least half of the thickness of the playing cards. So a nice sort of uh, excuse is you can have the spectator to cut anywhere they want and they're gonna force you to deal from uh, the middle, okay? That's gonna make it a little bit more invisible also, if they look straight from the top, it's much better. Um, and because of the, usually the normal situations, uh, the spectator, they're gonna be in front of you, uh, looking at the deck of playing cards, 45 degree angle. They won't look uh, straight from the top. So you can, if you want, uh, tilt it a little, a little bit more. But also notice the index finger remain all the time and mainly concern covering underneath you see when you take the card at the bottom and try not to use just the tip a little bit further um, but you see when you practice what it makes this dealing or this grip for a bottom deal so um, efficient is because uh, i'm actually just you know using the pinky finger i'm not using any other finger um, or any other uh, ready, because in other grips, um, I'm not used to it. But you have to be ready while you're dealing cards, you're getting ready to take the card at the bottom, uh, halfway. So when you get here, you can uh, much easily uh, take it off the deck. So that's it pretty much. Once again, the rhythm and the way you swing, it makes things also uh, a little bit more invisible as well. You know, but we always use these techniques as a show off. It doesn't matter how professional you are, uh, sooner or later you you miss the the card at the bottom. When you're dealing, you you won't catch the card at the bottom. And then you have to go back faster. And you see how uh, because of the white borders is much easier to tell when is the card from the top and we need the card at the bottom. In this case, with these other ones, it's a little bit more, not impossible, but a little bit more tricky, you know. Let me use the half. You can practice with the half. Top, bottom, top, bottom. This is a nice uh, exercise. And don't, don't start uh, by throwing the cards. Just start by uh, getting the card at the bottom. That's the beginning of the exercise. And um, this bottom deal, because of the grip, is not a big deal. What it becomes a big deal is uh, throwing the cards and then throw the card at the bottom, you know, with that same rhythm. That's the only issue. Now, if your table is not big enough uh, or long enough, you know, to do a demonstration to throw cards, you can use these um, card boxes with the cards inside as, as a wall, you know, so the card doesn't really fly out too much. When you practice at least, you can put them over here. And then it's gonna help you when you, you know, so it doesn't keep flying out, which is a nice um, principle to practice. But you see, comparing all this volume of the thickness of the playing cards 
when you throw the cards. And when you reach, the problem is you have to use a little bit more of the finger to reach underneath. So the index finger is actually contacting the card all the way at the bottom between the index and middle finger. Now, of course, using the middle finger is a little bit more practical because you can cover with the index finger a little bit better. Okay. And you can bend, the, just by bending the middle finger, it helped, you know, to speed the process. Top, bottom, top and bottom. And the problem again, and uh, using the middle finger is I won't be able to throw the card. And well, at least, you know, the way I'm used to, you, you are not gonna use, you know, the index finger and then you the middle finger to, sh to reach the bottom, top and then the bottom. You know, it doesn't look um, as good. Probably it doesn't look too bad, you know, but it doesn't look as good as uh, using the same finger for all the tossing cards. Now, there is a second concern, which is the sound. Sometimes um, it, it sounds a little bit different when you grab the card uh, on top and the card at the bottom because of the thickness. You don't want to exaggerate, of course, but with a practice, um, you won't do a lot of pressure. The top, and this is for our sound purposes. Look, and when, you, when I put it at the bottom, at least I try to make a little bit more noise when I get it from the top and when I get it from the bottom, equally. And when you throw the cards, it doesn't sound too much, which is a little bit better because you're getting more and more familiar how not to pull to the top because you don't have to pull to the top, you know, just to the front, outside and in the front. And you need to start, you know, a little slowly, little by little. And, and this is pretty much it. Uh, the card on top, when you reach in the card at the bottom, and I barely open the second and third finger. I barely move them out of the way. And, but I do pull that card on the top, outside, and then reach the card at the bottom by returning the card. Okay. And you know, there is not much I can tell about this, this move because there is no secret to it. It's just the practice and the grip, which is not really... Um, I haven't seen this grip, you know, uh, to a lot of professional uh, gamblers using the pinky finger on the back. Uh, but you don't have to be too obvious or stick the pinky finger all the way outside, just the very tip, just contacting the, the bottom half. And if you show a little bit of a, of a flesh doesn't matter, but a natural angle, they won't see too much anyway. Which is um, the same grip you can do as a show off for a top, second deal, and bottom deal. The same pinky principle in, you, in the back. For this grip, it's still the same move, the same speed, the same grip. And let me show you top, second, bottom. Okay, now uh, face down is top, second, and bottom. And again, the and one last thing I want to mention before I finish with this video is and uh, the swing. Notice um, this hand which is holding the deck of playing cards is the one mo doing the most of the swing. The hand that I'm that I'm uh, dealing with is not swinging too much. Okay, this is the hand that is swinging. And get used to spin also the card at the bottom. Oh, and one, and maybe um, you don't have to, but uh, when I uh, go for a card at the bottom, you know, if I use the thumb right on top, or if I contact any card on top, sometimes, you know, in the practicing, I was uh, getting some issues, grabbing the card on, you know, underneath or second, and I was grabbing more than one card. So instead, 
um, I sometimes uh, when I remember I I rather put a thumb right above the index finger instead of contacting any of these cards. I rather contact the the index finger. Okay, so I can do a little bit more pressure on the underneath at the bottom of the deck. And they won't see too much anyway because of the speed. And it doesn't have to be really, you know, really fast. A decent speed will be fine, you know. Now, another way to make this move a little bit more efficient, um, you don't have to, but um, I still uh, I will explain it anyway, is, um, you know, to lift the deck at this edge to the audience view. Not too much, probably right there. So they don't really see either way you grab it from the top or from the bottom. Again, the top and the bottom, the top and the bottom. So they don't, and because this hand, the, the, the hand that is holding the deck of playing cards is the one swinging, um, maybe it's a little bit more justifiable either from the top or the bottom. The top, the bottom, the top. And, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, you want to use this dealing principle instead of throwing the cards. Try to snap on the table. So by the time you go for a card at the bottom, it doesn't sound too different than uh, the other three piles. Thank you.